Mr. Jackson, do you yourselves see yourselves as Watchtower's total ass clowns? Well, I think that would be quite presumptuous to say that we are the only ass clowns that Watchtower is using. Woo! How you doing, guys? It was the early summer of 2006 when I had first made contact with Jehovah's Witnesses. I uh, was still doing the marine construction at the time, and I had actually started my own personal Bible study some 10 years prior to this. Initially, as a matter of fact, I had mentioned this in an earlier video, I thought I needed help. Looking back on it, I probably just should have stayed on the course I was on. Anyways, I'd had limited discussions with JWs prior to this, but not much. I mean, I knew very little about the organization. And uh, it had been some years since any Jehovah's Witnesses had come to my door. Well, I was on my way to work. Like I said, uh, I, at the time I was about 220, 220 pounds, was uh, still working out like a bull. So I had somewhat of a threatening appearance, which is what I'm going to go into. I went to, uh, was on my way to work, and I had stopped off at a local gas station to fill up. It was a busy morning. The place was packed, as usual. So I uh, went into the store to pay for the gas, and there was this uh, young woman in there, very well-dressed. I mean, kind of stood out. And she, in her hand, she had a, a couple of watchtower and awakes. I was guessing now that she wanted to place them. I figured she's got to be a Jehovah's Witness. So I went out and filled my tank up. And I noticed, okay, she's getting into this car. There were four of them all together. I didn't know their routine or where they were going or what the deal was. I just knew, you know, I had to stop them. Funny how things change, isn't it? Well, anyways, I filled the tank up real quick. I wanted to stop them before they left. So I hoofed it over to the car pretty quick. Three of them had already gotten into the car. And there was this one Bonnie Rubble-looking dude still standing outside, so I'm approaching him. I got close enough to see the look on his face. And he had the look of fear. If I didn't know better, I would have swore he soiled his pants. His knees were about ready to buckle. This look of fear in his face. And I said, whoops, maybe I better slow down. I'm scaring the hell out of this guy. Well, which apparently, yes, I did. Uh, nobody in the car noticed what was going on, so I identified myself. And uh, in actuality, this turned out to be my Bible stalker. You know, the wannabe badass? Well, I got news for you. That morning, he didn't look so bad. Well, it was funny. My boss, while I was doing the Marine construction, I had told him about the uh, witnesses, and I had just started to study with them. And it was funny. He'd uh, Every morning, go, hey, how's the cult going? And, you know, yeah, we laughed it off and stuff. And I never realized till the last few years how right he was. Well, anyways, he liked to talk about, uh, well, I'm talking about my Bible stalker now. Liked to talk about our first meeting. Didn't realize for quite a while that he had tweaked the story a little bit. Uh, and now, all of a sudden, wasn't a busy morning in a gas station. It was quite secluded. And... He started telling people, yeah, this big thug was coming after me. I was going to take his leg out from under him. I bit my tongue for a while on it, but after a while it got kind of old. And I just wanted to tell him, yeah, was that before or after you wet your pants? Well, this went on for a few months. And each time he told the story, I got just a little bit more threatening. And he just got a little bit more heroic. Yeah, you know, I'm from the streets. You know, I would have taken your knee out. Yeah, well, uh, son, Sesame Street's a street, too. I guess he was trying to uh, impress me with the street story because he didn't really know much about me. To this day, he really he knows little tidbits about me. So, But uh, I had mentioned some time ago he was always in a competition with me. It was pretty easy to figure out that this guy was probably one of those little wussies that used to get a bitch slapped anywhere he went. and. When he became one of Jehovah's Witnesses, he tried to overcompensate it. And obviously, who's going to challenge you in the Kingdom Hall? 
Well, anyways, this story went on and on, and I got to the point where, look, I don't want to hear the story anymore. Well, you know, I was going to take your knee out. And I'm like, yeah, I've heard that before. Whether I was going to let you do that or not is a complete different story. But, mind you, I was a 220-pound chiseled rock, and he was a troll under the stairs is how he looked. Anyways, things went by, and as I was studying for a few months, coming close to, close to baptism, the story kind of subsided. Well, there was one one circuit, one day special assembly I was not going to be able to make, kind of find out that he was involved in the show, I like to call it. Yeah, I found out he was being interviewed. Didn't know what about, didn't really care. But he had no idea that I wasn't going to be able to make it. I didn't realize the story he told until after. And this was basically when I found out that all the interviews that we hear at the circuit assembly, the regional conventions, then the district convention, or even during the midweek week meeting, are not only overly elaborated on and exaggerated, but in some cases are just plain made up. And I found this out pretty much right away. Mind you, he's in, standing up in front of 2,000 people. I had no idea that anything was being said or what he was going to say. I found out the next meeting I attended. Well, it was a typical Thursday. I showed up at the Kingdom Hall, walked inside, and this, this older woman, nice lady, walks up to me, and she says, I didn't know you attacked so-and-so's wife. And it kind of took me off guard, and I'm like, well, that's because I didn't. Well, I kind of brushed it off. I wanted to find out exactly where this came from. Another couple came up to me, laughingly. And at the time, I figured out after they actually didn't believe it because they were laughing about it, but they said the same thing. I didn't, we didn't know you attacked so-and-so's wife. At this point, I was seeing red. And I says, where is he? Oh, he's not here yet. Okay. I'm going home. Let him know he's to expect my phone call. And I left. I just said, I did not want to be in the hall at that point in time. Well, the next time I talked to him, I says, uh, exactly what did you say? And I found out from several people what he had said. He had totally changed the story to where it was a vacant parking lot. Nobody was there. I don't even know if it was a busy morning now or not. Where he, from a distance, was watching this thug attacking his wife. Yeah, he changed it. Made me look like a rapist. Attacking his wife, he stopped the attack and somehow talked me into taking a Bible study. When in all honesty, I'm the one who approached him. But I told him, I says, that story was so inaccurate. It wasn't true. And I says, well, you know, it was, it was, you know, building, building up for them. And I'm like, but it wasn't true. Oh, come on. It was a good story. And I'm like, yeah, at my expense. You know, I'm like, you didn't make yourself look like the rapist. You made yourself look, look, to, be, look to be the heel, hero, rather. I was fuming. I says, look, it, I don't ever want to hear that frigging story ever again. Or I'm going to take you outside and show everybody just how inept you really are. Well, didn't hear it again for a while. Come to find out later that nobody in the congregation actually believed it. Because uh, <clears throat> every time he told the story, it would change just a little bit. But frankly, I don't like being made to look the fool that way. Not at my expense. I mean, really, the guy was a total jerk board, and at my expense. Well, anyways, I was telling my boss about it. <laughs> my boss is like, this guy's a total jerk. <laughs> ah, Sorry, guys, I had to sneeze. Anyways, my boss said, what a total jerk. And I says, the guy made me look like an absolute criminal. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses are very gullible people <laughs> anyways, but, and I thought they really believed him, and some of them may have. Well, anyways, at this point in time, i have been working doing the marine construction for over seven years now, and my boss was looking for something else to do. I was looking for something new to do. 
Now, my baptism was coming up in a few weeks. And it coincided that my last week on the job would be the week of my baptism. Okay. My boss told me, you know, this is going to be the last job we're going to be working. I'm putting the company up for sale. Okay. Which was fine. I mean, I needed out anyways. A few weeks after I was baptized, one of the elders had a interview segment that he wanted to use me on. And he wanted to go on how after I was baptized, because at the time I was unemployed for about six months after I was baptized, but I was well compensated after I left the job, so I was quite able to carry myself for quite a while. But basically he wanted to tweak the story a little bit how <clears throat> I lost the job because I opted to get baptized. Which, it was quite coincidental that it fell around that same time, but I, was, I agreed to do the interview, but I really didn't like how they wanted me to do it. <clears throat> uh, we went through it, and I kind of avoided talking about the job until he mentioned it. I mean, I was kind of talking around it. Oh, yeah, I'm having a difficult time finding work now that I'm baptized. And he mentioned how I lost my job because... I had, was getting baptized that weekend. See? And this is all I heard. See, Satan doesn't want you to get baptized. Another thing, yeah, let's build up the congregation with more bullshit stories. And that basically was it. These first two interviews, one from my Bible stalker, and had I been there when he told that story, I think I would have walked on the platform and tossed him off of it. And proud as hell about it, and actually believed it. And then this interview shortly after I was baptized. I uh, opted never to do anything, any interview like that again. And it was probably a good five years. I kind of kept to myself, you know, did the thing. But after a short amount of time, I realized that this organization was BS. Anyways, guys, that's about all I want to say on that. I leave you comments if anyone has had any similar experiences or as far as uh, tweaking of stories or over elaborating on them but leave your comments below I want to thank my subscribers for putting up with me and if you come across this video and like it leave a thumbs up hey J dubs don't forget to leave the thumbs down let me know you're out there and if you come across this video hit the subscribe button you guys have a good day I'll talk to you soon